Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. This is episode number 175 and this is The Secret Show. Why is it called The Secret Show? I don't know, all the good names were taken. Mark Sargent joins me, Patricia Steer. Hello, Mark. Hello. That reminds me of a movie quote. Mean Girls, when they uh, they were talking about that one girl, it's like, why is her hair so big? Because it's full of secrets. Oh, I like it. I like yeah. it. Um, what do you like better, Mean Girls or the precursor to Mean Girls? You know what I'm talking about? It's not Heather's. Oh, oh, you I mean, mean a movie that was not did not star all those people? Yes, yes, yeah. Like Heather's, I think would be not Heather's. Not uh, Heather's. It's not uh, Heather's. It's not Clueless. Mm, Clueless pretty much would be. Would that be a precursor to Mean Girls? Kind of, in a way, yeah. yeah I think Mean Girls stand. It's one of my guilty pleasure movies, and it stands out on its own. Hmm. They tried to do a sequel to it, tanked, like Grease Two. Ugh. I liked Heather's when it came out and I tried watching it with, at the time, my ex-Scottish boyfriend's daughter who was maybe 12 and there was a lot of profanity in there. Not that she's never heard it before, but I felt uncomfortable watching it. Now, when I watched it originally, when it came out, I didn't really notice it, but I felt weirdly guilty that she was hearing it and it was because of my suggestion. So, really? Yeah, you know how that is. So what, uh, what are we wearing today? We've got a, a blouse that's emerald green that doesn't. I'm not naked and I'm not wearing a cocktail dress in case with a with a matching green promise. pendant. Yes, this pendant has special powers given to you by the high priestess of the Duchess of Buckingham, I believe. Marlboro, actually. The Duchess of Marlboro. <laughs> she smoked, but didn't smoke Marlboros. Nice. Anyway. Right. We're here to talk flat earth. We're here yep. to talk about videos that have happened in the past week or so since we got together. We're here to talk about mainstream media and how they're catching on to flat earth. We're also here to jump into the chat and say hello to you and see what you're up to. So what do you think the biggest story in flat earth is right now? Right now? Are you kidding right me? Right now. Are you serious? Right this second? <laughs> yes. Uh, the Denver Post running Flat Earth front page on their Friday edition before going to the weekend. Exactly. That, that would probably be it. I'm, I'm officially calling mainstream right now. You want to know when mainstream finally broke, that's when it happened. It wasn't page five. It wasn't section D. It was front page, top of the fold, with picture, Flat Earth, Denver Post. Denver Post. Now, previous to that, and we discussed this on another episode uh, last well, we did the secret show on Monday last time, just because it worked out better for us. Um, Nathan Oakley got involved with Vice Media. They found him on Facebook, right. contacted him, and asked to interview him. He went to London, to their London headquarters, and they interviewed him about Flat Earth. And he did Flat Earth proud. He did a great job. Did a great job. Anytime any of us, if we ever talk to mainstream, it's going to be hard because they may ask questions that, you have to be careful of what you're going to answer because you have to realize we know things about things in flat earth. We understand concepts. We've been here, all of us, I'm speaking to all of us, we know, but you have to word it in a way to which somebody who's never heard about it will be able to grasp it. And exactly. you have to not drive them away with what you're, what you've said. Exactly. Uh, you can't say things like, Oh, it's flat. And, and, and that's that and walk away. I mean, that would be crazy. You Even though that explain. rhymed. That was that was that yeah, was good. Exactly. Yeah. You have to explain it to them in a way in which it is easily accessible. You can't really give them all the information all at once. It's too overwhelming. And there's a number of people, like for example, Authentic Intent. Uh, that's the YouTube channel. He's going around and talking to people about flat Earth uh, as he's walking through parks. He's, he's doing it everywhere, and you can watch him and see how how difficult it is to get someone to actually pay attention to you. Uh, he gets groups of people, adults and or younger people, and does capture their minds. And many of them ask some really great questions. Funny enough, they're almost, almost always the same questions. We know what they are. How come you don't fall off the edge? And how could they hide this? But he uh, he's making some headway. And I know he sometimes has said to himself after he's done one of those runs, oh, I probably didn't answer that the right way. Next time I'll do this. But if you get invited to do a mainstream interview... You don't have a second chance. 
And that's what makes it so hard. And that's why I, I will once again say that Nathan Oakley did a really, really great job. It's yeah. different than a casual on the street interview. This is something that once your words are said, they go down and then they're printed or captured forever. So uh, Denver Post, what do you think of the article? What do you think of the cover picture of the Denver Post? Oh. <laughs> Well, wasn't the cover picture, I think the, uh, well, maybe it was, maybe it was the one they, they wanted to go for, because what they had done was they went up to the Flat Earth meetup in Fort Collins, Colorado, when Globusters was up there, Bob from Globusters and ODD did the interview then, you know, they, they had done my interview separately on the phone. And then they went up there and did interview, took notes. I don't know if they recorded anything. And the guy that did it came back and then it was turned over the the follow-up was turned over to another guy and then i was worried it's like ah oh, crap usually that means like oh i'll take this from you kid because the guy that initially did he was young and they went up a second time and took pictures you know a photographer you you know about that because it's like okay apparently they still do have to do follow-up pictures you know where you actually pay a photographer it's like really a phone doesn't have good enough resolution just can't it's not like you're burning exactly. film when they came out there the first time why didn't they just take a cell phone and snap a few pictures yeah yeah it would but be much more natural and real and they put five pictures on the website version, but they only put one on the newspaper, of course. And the one they chose was children looking up at a video monitor. And they did that deliberately. Again, it's very clever because it's like, oh, you know, what are they, what, what is, what's happening to the children? You know how it goes. Right. The we're children. Pro we're program. Oh. They'll say we're programming children. Exactly. We're producing pedophilia, although that has nothing to do with pedophilia. But that's the angle that mainstream might take. Um, it's pretty sad. However, I mean, we're we're into quite a few Denver things. Denver Post, you know? so that's a that's a win. Charitable organizations, literacy programs, world domination, but children, <laughs> no, no, we're, it's 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 a completely different thing. There's children that are involved in flat Earth because they saw their parents watching videos, and they've right. taken it upon themselves to make videos. In fact, you highlighted one such YouTuber's channel. It's a uh, two guys, I think, two young guys. I think they're brothers. Oh yeah, they have a YouTube channel that they've done with their parents' blessing, obviously, because they've got Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and every social media that you can imagine, plus some you've never heard of, that are linked to their their YouTube channel. And they kind right. of did a fake flat earth news story. Right. And they're on their own doing their own stuff. And they're good for them. Approve Absolutely. of it. So uh, I don't see it as being indoctrinating children. Children no, have been I indoctrinated had... in our school system. We were indoctrinated in our school system. That's the problem. I had nothing to do with like the six-year-old girl who was video video by her nine-year-old brother. Yeah, exactly. Didn't call them up say, "Hey, make a flat Earth video, kids. Make it short." No, <laughs> they did it on their own. And it's like, stay in frame. My God, we worked on this, people. <laughs> the uh, it you no, know, it, it was great. It was really great. And yet there were comments in there. It's like, oh, the children. Well, you can't please everyone, right. so you can't even try. Just everyone do their best. And if you get criticism for doing something that was completely innocent, like having your own children in a video that you approve of, right. you get flack for that, then it's the problem of the person who's giving you the flack and the way their eyes and their mind, mind and heart work, that they're viewing it as something nefarious. Um, Other than the picture, which was meant to grab their interest, mm -hmm. the article was solid. The article was not was not mean, and if you want to know, and I and I was talking to some other other reporter people recently, and th I was saying, look, the the guy that wrote the article certainly sounds like a closet flat earther to me, mm. and he goes, how do you know? And I go, well, you know how I know? Because he didn't attack it. He did, in fact, not only did he not attack it, he didn't bring in counterpoint. Meaning, normally an article like that would go flat earth, flat earth, flat earth. Here's the response from somebody we just drug out of mothballs in a uni local university. Yeah, here's a scientist to refute everything that crazy guy just said. Yeah, and that did not happen. Great. And Great. so it was good. And and he did not butcher my words too much, calling me the father of the flat earth. I didn't really agree with that, but I'm not going to call <laughs> bit him of on a it. Stretch, but, uh, it might be a little bit of a stretch, but at the same time, I'm going to take credit for the clues at least. And, you know, yeah. right the dummy's guide to flat earth you are the father of the flat earth clothes i'll give you that there you go father of the flat earth clothes and 
yeah, hopefully no one ever challenges me on that. Like people that have millions of hits with my clue. It's like, no, oh, I wrote them. It's like, no, <laughs> no, no you didn't. that's my voice. But what happened was what followed was very interesting because it was it was almost identical to the Kyrie Irving situation. If you guys remember, way back in early 2017, the uh, Kyrie Irving. I remember those days. Don't you remember? Long ago, <laughs> uh, before I got my dentures. <laughs> <laughs> Did they call them dentures then? <laughs> I they, call, they called them wooden they call, teeth. They called them choppers. <laughs> choppers. Oh my God. So yeah, it wasn't that long ago. Kyrie Irving, just before the All-Star break in the United States, the, the All-Star break for basketball weekend, on a Friday night, while he's flying into All-Star weekend, was when he did his famous podcast. And because it's Friday, all your major mainstream people, you know, they're still five days a week, you know, Saturdays and Sundays, they're on, on skeleton crew. So they had to absorb the story. And then by Monday morning, every sports station and most of the other media world descended upon that. And, and it was Kyrie Irving for the whole week. So what happened was when the Denver Post thing came out on a Friday, not it didn't get that much attention until well the, the readers of course just lit the comment section up with reckless abandon over the weekend but by monday quite a bit of mainstream media and we're talking mainstream media now the big players were getting involved because of how the denver post placed it and by that i mean a lot of in fact every mainstream person that i had talked to between then and now were tied to this in some way because of the Denver Post, because they ran it as their lead story. That's the difference. If they would have buried it next to weather and sports, wouldn't have gotten that much of attention. But when your lead story on a Friday morning is, there's a bunch of flat earthers in Colorado, and here's what they want to talk to about, talk to you about. This is so exciting, everyone. This is yeah. what we've wanted to happen. Yeah. The reason that I started this channel was to just sort of be a conduit for people who had smaller channels to get on a little bit of a bigger platform and then everyone can kind of meet them and then everyone subscribes to everyone else and you know we become a big dysfunctional family that way so that's right. the reason for this channel it's to grow more flat earthers yeah. and that's what's happened and we've been wondering about mainstream and how will it happen oh was it going to be tila tequila yuck is it going to be uh you know these basketball stars is it going to be bob some good opportunities there um but it turned out to be the mainstream media mainstream has taken media. a fancy so, to it yeah and to me that's the best of all possible worlds if they write a story not from a skewed crazy perspective and then quote the flat earth society and mix and mingle a bunch of lies in with the truth and so far with nathan oakley's uh, uh vice media interview and uh with the denver post article we're all good let's keep it going yeah the next thing that's happening I, as far as i know maybe correct me if i'm wrong yes the houston chronicle has contacted me i live in houston uh, and and they came out to my house, one of the reporters, and she interviewed me for about an hour about Flat Earth. And uh, she's coming back to take a picture uh, probably in a couple of weeks. I don't know why they're sitting on this story, but they are. And they're going to take a picture during our show. So it gets us that's, in. That's the what the shot. Post did. The Post, in fact, I was so concerned that they were going to kill the story. Because so they write it and then sit on it for a while? Well, yeah. Well, they write it. They got to run it through editors. They got to, you know, they got to mm -hmm. have meetings and stuff. Got it. And they, I was concerned again. I don't know why I was concerned. You know, I always believe in the system. But I, I contacted them that Thursday, Thursday afternoon. And I just asked. And I said, hey, are you going to kill this? Because I just need to know we haven't heard anything. And it was the exact opposite. Go, oh, no, 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 we're going to run it tomorrow morning. Had no idea it was going to be the front page. Maybe I, I shouldn't have said that 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 they've contacted me. What if they kill the story? Well, you know what? If they kill the story, I'll tell you they killed the story. And we'll all be knowing yeah, information I, together. It's not like I'm going to jinx it. I don't believe in that. I mean, well, because you and I have seen radio, uh, radio podcasts self-destruct on this thing. Yeah, we were Where, in a radio podcast once that self-destructed right after we got off of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. People want to go out with a bang. I have been on, I mean, yeah, I've posted 122 interviews, but I've done probably about 127, mm -hmm. 128 maybe. But those other ones, you're never, ever going to hear because the station folded that night. 
because right. it was like it's this is our last story and for that we're doing flat earth good night everybody <laughs> and that was it they went out with a blaze of glory yeah and uh they so thought they were probably flipping the middle finger off to the station but in reality they did go out in a blaze of glory bringing about in their program for the very last show the greatest truth that mankind's ever mm, had hidden from them exactly exactly so the so your the houston chronicle which will be an original article will probably come out next i would think yeah maybe i don't know i have no idea and i don't know i, I hope it's not buried somewhere or i hope the, it gets close to um it's not a, the article's not about me she did ask me questions about how'd you get involved and all that the article is about flat earth and boy it's really hard to make sure that you speak about something and be inclusive of all of the people involved i know that in flat earth we have a wide variety of of ideas about maps and models uh we have a wide variety of people who have uh, they come to the party with different religious beliefs. Some were atheists. So you have to make sure when you're talking to mainstream who has no idea about all the ins and outs that we do and can't right. make those fine lines that we all can because we know what's going on. You have to present it in a way that it's more easily accessible to the common person. And remember that you're the common person yeah. that is now a flat earther. So it's not as easy as you might think to do it. Um, so I'm hoping that I did okay. And I know I that- I think uh, you did fantastic. Yeah, it'll, it'll be great. Now, other things are happening. Uh, oh yeah. ODD the, and well, can tell us about the potential maybe for another mainstream article and- Yeah, there are a bunch. Well, what happened was it, uh, the mainstream had a chance to absorb everything over the weekend. So and it's Denver. Yeah. Bomb in Denver. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so this, this flat, yeah, Denver decided to break ranks and do the Red Rover thing and send flat earth right over. And after they did, the mainstream media all of a sudden it's like, wait, what exactly? You know, this this again. But now we've got mainstream people that the the non-sports. And again, look at the stages. It, you know, it went the music industry kind of dabbled with it first, then the athletic groups, now mainstream. And so by Monday, what had happened was there were people reaching out all over the place. And I had calls routed to me. Uh, the first one was from HBO. Who who runs a news segment? H HBO. Runs HBO. Yep. HBO. Wow. Now I don't. I don't watch HBO. I don't read newspapers, but people in the mainstream do, and that's who we want to wake up. Um. By the way, I'm gonna let you continue. But do you hear a really loud noise outside of my house, like a truck noise? No. No. My neighbors really? are having trees uh, trimmed, and it's just right then just got incredibly loud. So if anybody oh, okay. can hear it. It's no, your mic, mic's overpowering it. You're good. Okay, good, good. Go so ahead. So HBO wants to do, as a matter of fact, if, and I'm not going to schedule it yet because I got I to gotta know exactly when they're going to do it, but HBO wants to do part of their news segment. They want to fly up to Seattle and do it on Flat Earth, and they want to talk to me, but they want it to be in the middle of a meetup. So if HBO confirms on this, there will be a, you will know this because Seattle will all of a sudden have a meetup pop up out of nowhere, probably with less than two weeks notice. It will be somewhere in North Seattle, probably Muckleteo, probably next to the ferry. And I will do what I can to make everything great. But they, they are absolutely serious about this thing. So fantastic. And if you go to the meetup, then there's a pretty good chance that you might get in the yeah, article. You might get on the on the talk HBO. to be able to you know tell mainstream, hey, this is real, this is happening. Wake yeah. up, everyone! This is a uh, this is earth shattering, literally. <laughs> the second group was ABC News out of Denver. They wanted to uh, talk to me. They wanted to. <laughs> They, they wanted to interview somebody local. They want to get somebody on camera there. And so I routed it back to a couple other people. And hopefully they, in fact, they, they, I don't have the email in front of me. I think it was Flatter Denver. Got a hold of it initially, but I also let ODD know. And unfortunately, BOB, I'm sorry, Bob from Globebusters is going to be in Hawaii. Or if he's, he's already on his way. So he's not going to be able to catch it. Here, let me pop this up real fast. One second. Uh, because I want to make sure that I get this right. It was James Shields with Flat Earth Denver was working with ABC. Was initially that was the contact out there. I do not know. I let ODD know and and said, look, if you can get a hold of these guys, they're already working with Flat Earth Denver. Don't you know? I, I mentioned that it'd be nice if you would talk to some of the presenters from the conference. Uh, you know, since you've got two of them out there in Colorado, which is great. 
So we'll see how that goes. The third group, of course, that, that reached out was CNN. This is almost like you're making this up. Making I'm this not up? making this up. This I know. Is, the CNN, I look, I thought it was I thought it was weird when the Denver Post called, but no, you know, now What's that expression get, that people I think it was a sign felt like shut the front door or what what is that? <laughs> no, get out. Get out. <laughs> Which is also a title of a uh, of a very white stereotypical movie recently. A horror really? movie I think I told you about. Well, all right. Anyway, so okay, here's the deal. CNN called me and they was, uh, it, again, it started with Denver. In fact, it was a, a CNN affiliate out of Denver who uh, initially, who was just, who wasn't just assigned there. I think he started out with CNN in Canada. But anyway, he, wa he talked to me for about 45 minutes and just hit me with that. And we basically did the interview while I was driving in a car. And by the time, in fact, I finished it in a Walmart parking lot because I needed to, to, to focus. And at the end of it, he wanted to talk to references. So a call out, shout out to anybody that was a subject matter expert on Strange World. Uh, if, if you haven't been gotten hold of yet, shoot me your best email and your best phone number to msergeant23 at comcast.net uh, because CNN wants to talk to you. They want to talk to some of the subject matter experts to boot. And they're also in touch with Robbie Davidson out of Canada, who's going to be organizing the, the conference. They want to talk to him as well. And it's, it was fantastic. It was a great, uh, you know, be, yeah, of course he was going to be skeptical. I would have been surprised if he wasn't, mm -hmm. but it was, he asked all the right questions and even, you know, even threw in the great stuff at the end. He kept using the term devil's advocate, which I thought was funny where oh. he was at the end, he was going, so have you been in an airplane before? <laughs> like, oh, seriously. Do you live in a cave? Have you like, never, never seen, seen an airplane? Computers? <laughs> but I've answered that question so many times that, that, that you know, I, ha I have to throw in some inflection. It's like, seen the curve, have you? Really? Yeah. Tell me about that curve. Right. I, seriously, I said it like that. And and he's he's he understands now, but it uh, it was great. So he's going to do a follow-up with those people it's out of my hands at this point he's done about as much as i think he's going to do with me and we'll see where where that goes other people that have that have been tied to this um i'm still trying to figure out uh, the the al jazeera network i don't know who they're talking to out there if somebody knows who's talking to al jazeera network please let me know just just out of curiosity so, so curiosity everybody stuff. who's been contacted has been contacted independently by these organizations, we have not approached them. No, none that solicited. That's the way it's been going. That it's it's been that snowball that we've been put all of us. I mean, been pushing uphill. All of us, every person on YouTube, every person that watches videos, makes comments, has a blog, makes T-shirts, writes books, anything involving flat Earth. We have been pushing the snowball uphill, and it keeps getting heavier and heavier. And now, finally. Have we reached the top of the hill and it's taking no, our own momentum? No, not yet. Until, till we get prime time television. Until somebody, I better not be Wolf Blitzer or Anderson Cooper. Until a CNN runs a story on television or Fox. Remember, the the main networks still haven't run television stories because that's yeah. the lowest common denominator: ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, CNN. One of those five. Oh, by the way, there's there is a couple other things. Real quick, can I? Can oh, I yeah, yeah, no, go ahead. Um. That's the problem with mainstream, though. If any of us get on mainstream TV, and even those of us who being having helping or being interviewed for articles, we're going to be labeled as shills because everyone distrusts mainstream. So what do you do? Refuse when a newspaper like the Denver Post wants to talk to you? No. Nope. Do we want flat Earth out there? Do it's not. And look, you, you and I, have, we've had this discussion before with other people. And that is this thing was never going to, you can, you have a choice. How many garage bands stay garage bands? Right. And they get the chance. I mean, yeah, now you could say, well, they always sell out. And it's like, eh, this is a little different. And that is. But what does sell out mean when it comes to a band? I've always wondered about that. Meaning they make worse music. Well, that's polished just, album covers. That's yeah. that. Yeah. That's it gets into the argument of it. It used to be about the music, man. It's now it's about just making records. You know, yeah. cranking out his stuff as fast as you can, get, being on tour as long as you can, 
you know, make, doing as many okay, photo so sessions and interviews. If somebody and, gets an uh, uh, gets to like the New York Times writes an article on flat Earth, I'm going to make this up, and D I T R H gets interviewed. Does that mean he's sold out, or does that mean that he's able to speak to a wider audience of people who might never have heard about flat Earth because they don't the watch lowest, YouTube videos? Your audience is in, are intelligent people who are well read and enlightened. The general population are mouth breathing troglodytes. <laughs> that no. Need to, yes, yes, they are. They are. But we're the general population. If you look at the cross section of who's on YouTube and who's watching videos, I mean, you know, you even it all out. And but there's how how would you anyone that wants to say that we shouldn't talk to those groups? Tell me how do you get to the rest of the population? We want yes, to get I, to everyone. We want to get we, to everyone. If you're gonna hit everybody. You've got to hit everything. Right. And that right. is anyone that's gonna run the story, however it gets Radio, out. Radio, TV. Uh, as, billboards, uh, newspapers, uh, magazines. As long as the message doesn't get diluted, as long yeah. as it get, doesn't get turned into a circus, as long as it's still kept serious, I have no problem with it. So far, so good. My so my far, interview so with the Houston Chronicle was completely serious. The woman writing it has experience from a previous relationship, a boyfriend that she had with aliens. He loved ancient aliens. So she's very well know, knowing about the aliens and abductions. And I told her this has nothing to do with that. She asked me, what are my beliefs about things like mediums and uh, uh, Bigfoot and all of those things? And I said... I've not had personal experience with any of these things. Flat Earth isn't about any of these things. Maybe some people who consider themselves Flat Earthers have. But the, Flat Earth is not about mediums and uh, ESP and aliens. It's, and I told her definitely that keep, that keep that in mind. The CNN guy did the same thing to me. Absolutely. He so they he, really so think it's a fringe cuckoo. Not that Bigfoot or mediums. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe who am I to say? He asked all the right, for me, he asked all my, the right buttons for me. He goes, what do you think about JFK? Who shot, he, 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 so, so who shot JFK? What happened with 9-11? Yes. What do you think yes. about Sandy Hook? And it's like, boy, you're going to slow pitch him like that. I'm going to give you 90 seconds of truth on each one of those. And then he goes, well, he goes, the way you're answering though, is it possible that did you believe in Flat Earth because you believe in every conspiracy? And I go, no, no. First I don't believe in every conspiracy. There's all sorts of fun ones I don't. You know, like Elvis having Bigfoot's baby, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's stuff. That's or, true, or, though. Or it? aliens. But the other thing I said, those conspiracies don't mean that much to me anymore because it's this and then much further down, you can talk about those. So I, I said, look, I just don't focus on those anymore. Mm -hmm. I focus on this. That's it. So and he got that. He understood that, Well, which was cool. Everybody in Flat Earth, I think, has a, a conspiracy or something they were looking into that that came before Flat Earth. I mean, I remember back in the late 90s, Art Bell talking about, I don't listen to Art Bell anymore, I don't even know if he's on anymore, but back then I did, uh, talking about chemtrails and reading about it on internet. I don't even know if they weren't blogs. They were just things you can find on the internet, which was a whole different internet than we've got now. But chemtrails. So that was something I looked at first. And then, of course, I looked at the animal agriculture industry and, right. you know, the thing about veganism, that's, you know, for another time. But yes, I was looking at things being not what we've been told. Right. And uh, we all have something that we knew was wrong about what mainstream had been telling us. Mainstream science, mainstream textbooks, just word on the street about how the world works. We felt something was wrong. That's why, because we were already seekers, that looking into flat earth came second nature to us. There's a lot of people who believe that everything is what they tell us. And they're not the people that are generally on YouTube. They are the people, though, that are watching HBO or that are reading a newspaper. I mean, I haven't had a newspaper subscription maybe ever. I think my, my parents had one. But I mean... Uh, you know, who gets the newspaper anymore? That's what I think. But hey, I'm more than willing to be in a newspaper. And, and yet the newspaper is the thing that isn't that caught, funny caught, caught this thing. By the way, a couple other mainstream things I got to mention to you. One is who seems to be the new flat earth friend in media. And that's Vice. Oh, the, yes. uh, the, uh, Vice Media. Again, weird. The, the coincidences, which is Vice Media, which interviewed Nathan Oakley out in mm -hmm. out in England. And then the HBO group that called me, they are tied to Vice. And I asked them, I said, hey, do you guys know? In fact, I sent them the Nathan's clip 
And he goes, no, we're so big that chances are that there, these groups don't even know what, what each other's doing. And then when I was talking to Robbie Davidson from Celebrate Truth, I asked him, he goes, oh yeah, Vice is going to be filming the conference. And I go, I go, oh, the HBO guys called you? He goes, no. And I, and I gave him throughout names. He goes, no, it's a completely different group. A, a third group of, not, of Vice is going to be actually doing the conference. They're so going to be Vice is like a Hydra, really. Yeah. And, but they all caught on to Flat Earth simultaneously within a week of each other. Well, it's funny because the reporter from the Houston Chronicle who contacted me is a very, I hate the term hip, and I hate the term trendy, but she is both of those things, young woman, um, who has an ex-boyfriend who, like I said, is into Under 30. aliens. Yeah, 30-ish or something. That would yeah, be the, the guy from the, the post demo, yeah, target the audience. Guy, guy from the post, young. The guy from CNN, young. So younger people are in the media mainstream are thinking this might be an interesting story we're not right. getting the yet i i know we will we're not getting the older people that write to do this story maybe the older more seasoned reporters would be like that's ridiculous i have no idea because i'm technically older at 54 and to me it was like yeah i'm gonna look into this right when i heard about it so right. I don't think age is what defines what some the type of person that would look into flat earth, but maybe when it comes to reporters, it does. One more quick mainstream media thing, and I don't know. Did Nathan send you the screenshot that he got yes, this morning? Yes, he certainly did. I'll let you. I'll let you. Uh, he got. I won't. I won't read the whole thing. In fact, I, it's not even in front of my so screen. So cool, everyone. This is. So but cool. BBC Science picked up on the Vice story contacted Nathan and they are want to develop a program that, that centers around this. And of course, remember what I said that inside the United States, it's really hard to criticize NASA because you're inside the United States. Yeah, what, what are they going to do with my article in the Houston Chronicle? NASA's here. Uh, well, be in the back page next to the, uh, I don't know, the cat, you never know. Free cat I mean, if section. They follow, if they follow the Denver Post thing, what, why do they have to lose? Seriously, remember, if whether you love it or you hate it, as long as you're reading it, that's all they care about. You know remember, true, yeah. remember, Snooki was made into a star and nobody liked her. She had no friends. Well, and I mean, we're not saying that people involved in this are going to be made into stars. I mean, that's no, 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 no. You know but, what I'm saying? Though? I'm saying that in that show, she was turned into, she was made, she was the, she was hate people watched that show as much just to hate her so what you're saying is flat earth in some people's eyes is kind of like snooky kind of yeah you like, love it love it or hate it you can't ignore it yeah okay uh -huh. you cannot you cannot ignore flat earth and so who knows maybe the chronicle you know, call the i mean they're going to call their whoever it is denver post and say so how'd that go for you i mean the fact that denver post had to do a follow-up article on this where mm -hmm. they were posted there was so much response I'm sure their mailbag hadn't been this full ever. There's so much response. They were posting letters. They did a separate story posting letters that people people wrote full blown essays. On the this. the uh, the person who came to, the reporter who came to interview me the other day from the Houston Chronicle said that she knows she's going to get a lot of hate now. Oh God! And I yes. said, you know, I think it's great. That shows engagement. That shows people are passionate, yeah. regardless of if 99.9 percent .9 say this is ridiculous doesn't matter. People are going to, it's going to be in their head. It's a seed that's been planted and a seed eventually will germinate and a seed will eventually grow. You don't need to do anything except just plant that seed and step back and so B it, it, it'll take on a literal life of its own. Absolutely. BBC will run, is going to try to build a show, a full blown show. A and science show. A science show. And what was interesting was the guy said, and again, I'm not going to quote him because I don't want to reveal anything, but he said in the email that he did not believe, he thought that NASA was just a propaganda machine for the Americans, which I always wondered why people outside the United States, you know, you and I are in the Americas, sure. why they believed, and I've said this to, to various people outside of this country, I was going, why in the world would you believe the Americans? When it came to space, you want to believe them about wars and this and that, that's fine. But seriously, they said they went to the moon and you just bought it without questioning it? Well, Come look on. at the movie, uh, the James Bond movie, What Diamonds Are Forever. Diamonds where they Forever. literally make fun of the moon John landing. Connery. And uh, I've mentioned Scottish ex boyfriend before. He never believed in them. When I told him about Flat Earth, he knows a lot about Flat Earth. 
uh, he, he came to my meetup, the mixer actually that I had here in Houston, not right. a flat earther, but just came to be supportive of me, which was cool because he was around in the neighborhood. Um, he never believed in the moon landing, he told me, when I told him that it didn't happen. Now, Flat Earth took a lot more convincing, and I'm not, he's, I don't really think he's there, but he understands the concept. But the moon landing for him was like, of course, that, that's crazy. We knew America lied. And I don't think Scotland or him, uh, I don't think that's, that's, uh, that's it. I think that there's much more skepticism about that outside of America. In America, it's all like rah, rah, American flag, red, white, and blue, man's greatest achievements. And um, it's almost like we've got blinders over our eyes. I, myself, thought we went to the moon till 2015. Yes, I had my head in shame. But I, I never looked into it. The oh, minute is, I looked into it, game over. Which is why I am I'm more leery of the CN, of CNN trying to do something with the story than Denver Post. Mm. Because it's like, okay, if you do this, the side effect is the space program now comes into question. Or become, there's more doubt pushed towards the space program than ever before. Yeah, that's because what I thought group. about Houston. Same thing. Yeah, the Houston, yeah. How in the world can the Houston Chronicle run a flat earth story? But Unless it's totally buried and made fun of. And But then I said, if I don't take this chance and say yes, I'd be a fool. And they didn't hesitate. It's not like they hummed and hawed. They they reached out immediately after the Denver Post did their thing. Right. And, and remember, Denver didn't... Post is not immune. They've got Space Command is in Colorado. Right. I mean NORAD, SAC. Yes. They are Colorado is huge military. Every state in the United States probably has some manufacturer that makes something for NASA or is somehow involved in the military. Right. So it's all like everything else, it's a giant conspiracy where it's all connected, but there's yeah. so much compartmentalization that, you know, one hand doesn't know what the other's doing. Yeah. So, um, and what, let, let me throw in one, the last thing, last but certainly not least, was the uh, story which broke, I think that broke after your show, was when Nathan from, I think you're going to have to, you have to film, film the blanks. Remember his name? The guy that went on, was it Ambrose? That three million. Uh, the guy who interviewed supposedly a NASA employee at Starbucks. Right, 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 right. He's got a Facebook page with a whole bunch of people on it. Unfortunately, I'm not on Facebook, but he's been making the rounds and, and, and making quite a splash. But he got on with ODD on that extended version. And then he got on the, on the, the main version of that YouTube channel that had three million subscribers. I can't remember the name of it. Do you remember the name of it? Uh, my it. mind, like a sieve at the moment. That's why I'm yeah, wearing this yeah, headband I'll to keep it, it together. It. <laughs> you find look. It. it is, one sec. And then I'm going to go is into Barcroft the chat. Barcroft Television mm -hmm. with, so Barcroft Television. Oh, let's see. Dun, 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 <laughs> I can't remember his dun, name. Dun, it's dun, Nathan dun, something, dun, though. Dun, Da, 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 da. I haven't met him yet. Oh, stop. The name uh, that song. What name, Jeopardy? Name that show that comes from. Really? I don't know, maybe some people don't know and just think I'm randomly singing because I'm an insane woman. Is it Jeopardy, Money Penny? Oh my God, you do that so good. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, okay, so Barcroft TV. Anyway, they have a mere three million subscribers. And they had ODD uh, it, it, and he kept that pretty close to the vest. I had no idea he did that. And Nathan and it made the the their websites and it was got a lot of attention. So great, good for him. There's a cry for more moderators in my live chat. Now, here's the thing. <sighs> moderators right. coming in there. I don't know, but moderators. You know, if we have if we're too over moderated in a live chat, then we're keeping away critical discussion. But is this show about critical discussion? No, give them it's give them guns. It's a community show. Um, hey, Authentic Intent is here, and uh, he and I are going to be doing a show together, maybe on Monday. Oh, cool. Uh, let's see. Shall we make him a moderator? Yeah. All right. Add moderator. Live moderator adding on Flutter. Wow. Patricia is assigning wrenches to people to deal with the current troll uh, problem. I think I'm going to give a wrench to Timaeus. Let me mention that anyone who hasn't resubbed to DITRH, please do so. Yes. DI, let's clear the air on that real quick. DITRH was his channel was taken down, not because of anything unethical or immoral, and not because he was soliciting to flat earth children. 
He got it taken down because he had some old Sandy Hook videos up there. And for those of you who don't know, there are, for lack of a better term, some Sandy Hook activists out there. People that say that, that how dare you, that it's an offense, that it's very, it's personally offensive to them. Yeah, it's the children. How dare you say that no children died in Sandy Hook? And because of that, they have made their case to YouTube and cited some little clause and it worked on David. They smacked him. One, two, three, channel gone. And these were old videos. And David, before he could, you know, he didn't probably think it was it was going to go down that way. And so he had to rebuild his channel. Now he's got another DITRH channel out there. He's building subs. So if you haven't subbed to DITRH, the new version, or you, and you know, go, go into your uh, old subs. And if you see a dead link, that's probably David's and uh, give him, give him a sub. Hmm. Tamea said that I mentioned my ex-boyfriend a lot. Uh, this my Scottish ex-boyfriend, the only ex-boyfriend I'd ever mentioned. Um, I haven't had a bunch of boyfriends, but I mention him because he's lives in Houston. He's in the matrix, but he kind of knows about flat earth and he supported me at one of my events. And he's an example of a person that I know in real life that I can talk to anytime I want. Cause he lives around here of, uh, a person who knows what it's like to live in the UK and the NASA fakery from that sort of eye. So I do bring him up somewhat of a bit. So no, mm. not, uh, not ever going to get back together with him. Though. I'm probably not going to bring up most of my ex-boyfriends. Yeah. Well, we would probably not want that to come out. No, probably not. <laughs> I did have an ex-girlfriend though. Buzz me after the Denver post. You thing. did. That's right. You told me that's funny. Because Tell she, she, uh, and we don't really talk that much. But she had gone through the internet, looked through pictures, and she saw the image, that cartoon image of the of the little artwork thing the IPS was doing, called the We Are Mark Sargent with the horribly pink Mark Sargent with the glasses, holding the microphone just like I'm doing now, the cartoon it's version cute. of that. It's lovely. And she was sitting at her dining room table and literally just fell off of it. <laughs> and just was laughing and laughing, thinks it's the funniest thing ever. But she finally started asking me questions. In fact, she asked for the first time ever, the uh, she goes what about the airplane curvature she goes i was on a on my way to a conference just the other day saw the curvature out the window I go did you now and so i emailed her uh, last night the a copy of one of the 120,000 foot weather balloon thing you know perfectly flat i'm going to ask the chat is there anybody who wants to be a mod like for good and i mean for good meaning to be good be good to those to do good. The, to do be good and do good. I mean, if you're a mod, that means you have to let people have a chance. Don't just ban everybody. Uh, Don't listen to them, kids. Kill them all. Let God sort them out. <laughs> if anybody would like to be a mod, um, and it, 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 you'll be a mod like anytime you come in. So um, if you don't want that responsibility, because um, take the gun, shoot first, <laughs> ask questions later. It's more fun than you might think. Yeah. So I, so you, you know, I had a bunch of mods. I removed some mods that. and no real reason other than just, I, I just don't want it to be too modded up out there, you know? Um, just standing over them, asking questions. What's the square love, root of 81? My What's love. The capital of Bolivia. <laughs> my love cocktail. I'm going to give him one. Uh, I almost put him in timeout. Wait, add moderator. I'm doing this on my phone. Okay. Yes, give um, a wrench to a guy who has a, a a name that's tied to a terrorist device. That's awesome. <laughs> Funny. Um, let's see. Bill Keith, he says yes, please. Now you remember everyone. Use the wrench with love. Oh, really? <laughs> but, like drink responsibly. I think. Use the wrench yeah. responsibly. Exactly. All right. Who else? Who else? Oh, looks like we had some trolling going by. Um, let them troll. Let me know what happens when you try to troll mainstream. See if exactly. you can do it um, Kathy from Tribulation now is here, and uh, LA Heartline Realm and RC Laurel Austin. Hey, poor Persian Scribe is here. Ute Hube as well. D Marble. Oh my gosh, D Marble. Yeah, I know that D Marble guy. D Marble. I've said this a million times, and people are going to start thinking I have a crush on him. He just has a glowing personality. And I think it's really great for Flat Earth to have somebody who's so serious, yet also can be funny at the same time. It's because he works out a lot. Is that it? He's glowing because he's glistening, because he's sweaty. It's just <laughs> shiny. 
And, um, and, oh, and Alex... if we do a Seattle meetup, by the way, Dean Marl, if you're listening, if we're doing a Seattle meetup, and no, it's not announced yet, but if it comes, you got to show up because there's going to be cameras. Um, let's see. Dean Marble has a wrench. He's got it. And uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Um, well, anyway, hello to everyone. And uh, I will, uh, I'll check back in later. There's a bunch of wrenches. And so people use them wisely. <sighs> All right. Uh, there's other what stuff you... I wanted to talk about when <laughs> I've spaced out as to what they are. What else? Because st I still have mailbag. <laughs> Nathan Oakley says he has a crush on D Marvel and he'd probably shag him. <laughs> Who? Me? No. Nathan. Oh, oh, Nathan. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's people in chat saying that Nathan is James Bond. So kind of is the flat. Nathan Oakley's the flat earth James Bond, I'm going to say. Uh, Zulu one as well. And Wesley says flat earth news is here. Four eyes to see. Hello, Carrie. I'm going to give you a rest. Nathan gets too. a show out of this. I will be so happy for him. Oh, my God. That would be so cool. That would be really cool. Especially with like, that, like a BBC new, science. New Can you imagine? Nora, no one's flower. I, she used to have a wrench. What did I do? I took away her wrench. But he should wear that hat. That uh, What do you call those hats? That hat that he wore for Vice. That's a great oh, that hat. hat that he was wearing is cool. I love hats. Oh, it makes him look like a British tourist, but I totally dig it. Uh, someone is saying that they're going to be 50 years old tomorrow, and I don't know who that is. But if so, hello. And happy birthday. 50 years okay. old. Pack it uh, in. It's over. Irk Childs, hello. Dexter Morgan, hello. Mike Flatbird and Toto Cult, who says wrenches are made for whacking, which, um, yeah, pretty much so. Um, Nora No One's Flower says she's a wrenchy, wrenchy. Um, you and... modify that saying when, uh, when, when all you have is a wrench, everything looks like a nail. There you go. Yeah. If all you have is a wrench, everything looks like a troll. Ooh, that's good. I'm gonna. These guys can take, and I, I'm gonna. I should coin this. Uh, they should take troll fees. Ooh. <laughs> See that? Happy birthday to Kathy of Tribulation now, and whoever it is, it's gonna be fifty tomorrow. Hey, Dave Hinkle, and uh, I saw a bunch of other people that were earlier in here uh, that I didn't have a chance to say hello to. This Lana as well, um, and. A bunch of other awesome people. We'll go, get back to that. I'm going to do right. door prizes if uh, if I do that Seattle meetup. I just realized because I've got a bunch of stuff. <laughs> that's cool. I didn't have any prizes for this one. I want to show. Well, yeah, but you bought all the food. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I want to show a picture. You guys can buy your own food and drinks. I don't care. But here's a picture of my beautiful, sweet cat Flynn, who is in. Oh, can you see him? Yes. He's being held by a nurse. He's at the vet. I brought him there just before I went on. He jumped down from about 14 feet high and hurt his paw. He went over the weekend to the emergency vet and they didn't, they weren't able to do x-rays and they gave him a painkiller and he was hopping on one foot. And um, anyway, so today that was when I had my appointment to bring him in and I brought him in and he has broke a small bone in his paw and a little bit in his other paw. And so he has to be uh, anesthetized and has a, have to have an operation on both paws. Really? But he'll be okay, right, everyone? He'll be okay. He what I, Do medicine. I dare ask what he was doing that high? Um, he was he trying was to find the curvature of the earth, <laughs> maybe. Mm. No, it's just the way the house is constructed. There's one room in the kitchen. It's kind of like a great room that has super high ceilings. And he went from the floor to the countertop, to the top of the refrigerator, to the top of the cabinet on the refrigerator, to like this really high portion. And then I heard this noise like thunk. And I was, <laughs> in, I was in the bedroom and I came out and I thought they'd knocked something over. And I gave a cursory glance and thought nothing's knocked over. And I saw all the cats just, you know, chilling. I thought nothing of it. But he was limping. I didn't see him limping then. He was just sort of grooming. And then later I came in and he was hopping. He Aww. didn't cry out in pain. He didn't cry or anything. I tried holding his arm, let's say, and, you know, he let me stroke him. He wasn't, you know, upset, but I knew something was wrong. And Aww. so you can't prevent when those things happen. Um, but, Curiosity. Yeah, well, he didn't get killed. 
Well, no, but you know, I have to be without him. It's a potential I could pick him up tomorrow, but then there's also a potential he'll be there until Monday at the vet. It's a cat hospital specifically for cats. So, ah, my poor little love, Flynn. I know, I know when people are like, she talks about her cats and fashion too much. You know what? I'm going to come through the screen and punch you in the face. I love my cats. You might love your children. Whatever we love, we love, and it's okay to talk about it. So, yeah. (laughs) Poor little Flynn. Oh. Mm. it'll be okay i know i know could have been worse yeah it could have been it could have been really 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 could have locked him in the dryer oh what i have front loaders those things i've made sure my house is cat proof except you know if they go up really high and that happens too happens every With- year cats like oh look <laughs> jump in that's a horrible thing horrible thing it's a horrible thing but, but then again, people also uh, die accidentally in garages because they, they pull in, they're drunk, they let the garage door go down, and then they <laughs> fall asleep. 1,500 oh, wow. people a year. Really? I've come to my house, opened the garage, came inside, got a call on Skype, and sat in my car with the car running for maybe 15 minutes talking on Skype. That I could be dead now. a few now. things, actually. <laughs> I never thought about it. I mean, I understand that, that that's how people commit suicide. Well, yes. And do you want me to, and, and let me break that down for you real quick, not to go. By the way, there's a tangent. No, they're talking about suicide. No, 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 let's, let's, <laughs> no. Let me break it down for you real quick because there's a, a common misconception. There's carbon di- dioxide, which we breathe out, and there's carbon. Carbon monoxide. monoxide. I've got carbon monoxide detectors in my house. I had them put in low uh, so that it, the and, cats somebody sleeping and whatever will we'll, the alarms will go off the problem with carbon monoxide is that so the reason why nobody dies going face down on their pillow is we have an automatic once we start running out of oxygen the body goes into panic mode which is why waterboarding wor- works so well but carbon now we're talking about waterboarding the carbon monoxide tricks the brain so you're getting less oxygen the carbon mo- monoxide uh, disables the panic mode. So instead of panicking well, as you're running out of oxygen, you start getting sleepy. And then it's like, and then sit. And uh, and alcohol helps. So a fifth of, you know, or well, a pint of whatever. Not, yeah. I guess that's a more pleasant way to go than other ways to go. Yeah. It is actually. It's probably the less, uh, well, let's not get into it. I'm just yeah, saying. I know. Let's change the subject. Specifically. Let's, let's talk about mailbag. Uh, I want to say hello to Laurel Austin. Uh, Johnny and me is here in our chat. Flat Earth Johnny and me, who says that he will be making an announcement here pretty soon, he hopes. Wait, so Johnny I'm who? going to go to that channel and subscribe and find out who? right away when that happens. Now, if you. What are you talking about? It's a new channel called Flat Earth Johnny and Me, or maybe it's not a new channel. It's new oh, to me, okay. and they're in the chat saying they they have they're going to have an announcement soon. Well, uh, I just went and subscribed to that channel, and if you subscribe to a channel, make sure to click the little bell icon, and when you do, you will most likely anyway get a notification that an, a new show has come out or there's a new live stream. So click the bell. Uh, you can unclick and then click, click the bell if you've not been receiving those notifications. So. Uh, let's see. Somebody is saying that uh, Hitler loved cats. I, I always get that. Oh, you're vegan. Well, Hitler was vegan. Well, Hitler liked cats. Whatever. <laughs> Hitler was also a painter. Exactly. And Hitler was also a mustache, a mustache. lover. Yeah. <laughs> like, so Hitler drank water and breathed air. So, gosh, people are dumb. Good point. Exactly. Uh-huh. Did you notice the shirt that I was wearing? Oh, please show us. It's a flat earth shirt. Where'd it come from? This is from Peter in the Virgin Islands. Oh, nice. He he uh, sent me two shirts because he is part of the group that does the race shirts. Because down there in the Virgin Islands, of course, you're going to do races because you want to send runners and triathlon and people to exotic places because you know it's a nice place to run. And so he sent me this one. And what he did was he actually worked the UN map into the race shirt. Oh, wow. I know. That was very cool. And then he sent me last year's version, which is uh, impossible. This is last year's. This is not a flat earth one. Impossible. This kind of gives you an example of what they do. 
And then on the back are all the sponsors for St. John's in the Virgin Islands. Mm. Yeah. So I'm going to thank you for these. And uh, yes, they're not extra larges, but I actually dig them. This particular type of fabric has got Gatorade on the shoulder. The thing about you and with all the flatter shirts that people send you unsolicited uh, is that you'd never actually probably have to do laundry again. You are just like the guys on the supposed ISS who wear one of those polo shirts and khaki pants and socks and then puts them in the airlock and they go out into space and burn up forever. They never have to do laundry. Well, <laughs> no, actually I do wear them and then I will... Uh, I, sometimes I'll give them away at mixers and, and give them away at, at things. Do you so, iron your t-shirts? I'm going to say no. No, I don't, but I'm pretty good about pulling them before. Like, yeah, I know these are, this one came out a little wrinkled, but it was bunched up. In the, Do you wash them inside out in cold water so the decal doesn't get? No, 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 I don't ever own anything that long. Anyway, thank you, Peter. And by the way, if you guys didn't know who Peter was, Peter is the guy that has the It's Flat Virgin Islands license plate and um, i didn't even know i didn't even know the virgin islands had their own license plate i oh, thought yeah, that's right. i remember you showed that hey i want to say hello to dread from you've been exposed or you've been exposed he was here earlier um he says he wants to thank us for all the love and he's great he's amazing and his significant other also has a channel uh somebody put that in chat what uh you've been exposed um significant others channel is i know I'm subscribed to it. I just can't right now come up with it with a name. So um, let's see. Alex Aquaria says, is that what meteorites are? ISS underwear. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Laurel Austin. Everyone's saying we should sub Laurel Austin. Why? Why? I mean, I'm not saying that we shouldn't, but any, I should go up there and find her name. I saw it earlier. I like the name Laurel. I like the name Willow too. Very tree. Very pretty tree names. Also a movie starring Val Kilmer. Laurel or Willow? Willow. Oh, Willow. Yes, of course. Willow. Not many Laurel people watched it, but directed by Ron Howard. There's Laurel Austin. For Lord of the Rings, there was Willow. Go to channel and subscribe. And click the bell. That's how you do it right there. <laughs> <laughs> you got so much street cred. It's unbelievable. Yeah, right. I am just... For one of the whitest women <laughs> ever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> somebody actually was trolling me on one of my videos and said, Patricia, you're so pale. It looks unnatural. You need to get out in the sun. I'm out in the sun every day. I just don't tan. There's nothing I can do about it. It's just my... You don't want to tan. No, I, it doesn't. Tan's not meant for me. There's women who are dark skinned who are beautiful and men and people who do tan and it's beautiful. I'm meant to be pale skin, redhead, and that's... I think aren't life. all redheads kind of aren't don't all redheads have a problem tanning? Some with more freckles, meaning have more melanin in their skin, can maybe get darker. Um, I don't have no idea really. I think it is all dependent on the individual. Mm. I'm fine being pale, but when I was in junior high, I, I lived in Florida, and I would go out with my girlfriends to the beach uh, in Miami and lay out with a very low sunscreen on or no sunscreen on, and I did have those kind of burns where like strips of skin would peel off. And they say most of your photo aging damage comes when you're very young. Uh, right. So, but they also say that sunscreen causes cancer. These are more newer findings from people who are more aware and awake like we are. So use coconut oil. And if you're worried about sun exposure, wear a hat, which is what I do. Wear some clothing that would be reflective of the sun, like something white. And, you know, do your best that way. Yep. So let me uh, see what else is going on. I just saw a pic picture of Flynn again. Oh, little Flynn. Anyway, can't be sad. That's how life is. While Patricia is looking, I want us to, to inform Oh, I wanted to show people this. What? Flat Earth Merch has done a Combo Wombo shirt, Mark. I don't know if you've seen this yet. No. I have to talk to make it still Oh, stable. my God. Please it's, tell me that is not It's Bill a Combo Murray. Bill Murray, Mark Sargent. From the Life Aquatic? Really? Yes. It's a It's a new shirt with a combination of you and Bill Murray, because people oh. say you're kind of the Bill Murray of Flat Earth. Nathan what? Oakley's James Bond of Flat Earth. I have no idea what like I am of Flat Earth. But Does that say the age? Something. Oh no, thank God. We are all Mark Sargent. He says oh, we are all God. Mark Sargent. This Bill Murray. Cool. Maybe so, maybe I'll get to meet him one day. I was a really big fan. Flat Earth merch. with uh, So check them out if you want that shirt. Isn't that cool? Um, oh, ESPN came out with an article. Um, excuse me. 
ESPN uh, videos came out on their channel with something called how NASA compares to the NFL sports science. It's full on space programming, uh, tying sports and space in together because that's a target demographic men who watch ESPN. A lot of them are the ones that you can get in those arguments with. If you just like, if it's your neighbor and you try to tell them about flat earth, if it's a hardcore in the matrix sports guy, uh, you may not have such great luck. Um, do want to remind you that, uh, one of my favorite videos to wake people up quickly is, uh, ODD realities, flat earth in five minutes. It's a great one to share. Um, it's got over a million views. It's got 11,000 thumbs down and 8,000 thumbs up. So really? If you have an opportunity, go to ODD reality and give that video a thumbs up. Not that it matters because thumbs down in the world of YouTube count as quote unquote engagement, meaning the audience is paying attention to this video. But it would be nice if we can tip the balance because we know this is an excellent wake up video. Uh, 11,000 thumbs down is not what is deserved. It deserves to be we, we need to right the ship. So go to Flat Earth in five minutes, ODD Reality's channel, and um, you know, yep, give it a thumbs you know up what? if Pro you have not. Producers would love those numbers because it shows how polarizing it is. It is a polarizing topic. Of, of course, it's a topic that's all about truth as we see it, but uh, you know you know how it is. I do. Um, let's see what else. Um, something else. Oh, uh, Donald Putnam has uh, mentioned that there's a Flat Earth meetup in Portland, Oregon. It's tomorrow. It's right. I did the trailer Black for that. Earth, Oregon. And it's at the Lucky Labrador Brew Pub. So, right. Hang on. Let me, I'll pull those up real quick. In fact, there's another one I just built. Flat Earth Las Vegas meetup coming up on the 13th, 7 p.m. at Aces and Ales. And uh, I have not done the trailer for that. So if you, if Vegas, when, when's that? That's tomorrow? That the 13th. There's two. That's two tomorrow. Uh, I don't know um, if I, I don't know if putting up my channel will do any good in twenty with twenty four hours left. Uh, there's also one going to be on the twentieth in Kansas City. I've already I just put up the trailer for that, and there's going to be a guy there who is a physics who used to be a physics student, but now is a flat earther. And Everyone uh, might know Seven Raven Wolf, who I don't believe is in our uh, chat right now. She's a really lovely woman from Australia, and she's a member of TTCC. And I'm a member of TTCC. It's something I kind of made up for the moment, which is the Three Cat Club. And it, uh, the, it's a membership of just people who have three cats. It's nothing. And it's not even a real club. It's sort of a joke. And we write that to each other in chats. But she's got a store on Zazzle, and it's called Tash Bell, T-A-S-H-B-E-L-L. -L. She lives in Queensland. And she sells flat earth stuff on her uh, on that uh on that Zazzle store. So you might want to check it out. Um, if you know Seven Raven Wolf, I think she listens to the show sometimes later. So hello and TTCC. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can drag up what I've got here about what she sells. Um, I, it's interesting stuff. One of them is a stamp, a flat earth stamp. And the other thing is not coming to my mind right now. You know, when you're a flat earther, and a YouTube content provider, it's almost impossible to remember all the things you tell yourself you want to remember. At the end of any secret show, I say to myself, oh my gosh, I forgot that, I forgot that, for that, yeah, and I kick myself. And when you're wearing heels, that can be painful. <laughs> <laughs> really? You're going to throw that in there? Yeah, why all not? All this and heels too. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, there's the... Uh, UK Flat Earth Mixer coming up the right. 22nd of this month. Uh, it's at the Royal Leamington Spa, and I'm flying to the UK. Nathan Oakley's picking me up from the airport in Birmingham, or Birmingham, as they would say, and uh, Birmingham, as we Americans would say, and uh, the next day is the mixer. People going, uh, as far as I know, I know Nathan Oakley is, and his wife Paula and their baby Eleanor, and I'm bringing along something for Eleanor. Don't tell Nathan. Uh, and uh, also Martin Leadkey is going. If you'd like details, you can message me at missteer at gmail.com or Nathan Oakley, uh, or you can message Martin. The details for this are in the description box of this video. That's the 22nd, and that's in the UK, and it's a flat earth mixer, and we're just doing it at a park, Jepson Park. Bring some picnic food if you want. Um, you don't have to if you don't want to, and we're just going to 
talk and walk and, and, and hang out and enjoy the beauty of nature. Hopefully it won't be raining and just have a, have a lovely time together. Cool. Um, I believe Nora, no one's flower is going to be there too. So I, I, I've got a room and I asked her if she'd like to stay with me. Okay, here it is. Um, Amanda, Seven Raven Wolf, has made a, uh, th th you can buy it on Zazzle. She's got a postcard and there it is. Hidden in plain sight, flat right. earth. It's one of right. the things she's made. And what else she'd made is a self-inking rubber stamp. Uh, and here it is. That's how it looks. Yep. And if you missed on the name of the store, you know, it's on Zazzles. You know, just go get it if you want. This thing, this, this, this rubber stamp would be great. Think of all the usages. Any bill you 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 send out stamp it uh use it you can take it with you when you're in a store and you can actually put it on the label of a product that's not defacing the product but like a like a paper oh, heck, product you can stamp every every bill that comes in your wallet yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so this is a this is a fun little toy here as long as you're not destroying property i think it's totally cool right. um and if you destroy property you know what yeah, as long as it's global property <laughs> all right what else what else is happening we haven't done our thing yet. Oh, what thing? That thing? Oh, we're not doing that live on the air. Joking. <laughs> what? what are you talking that's, about? That's private time. I didn't, you... I didn't get the memo. What? No, really, what are you talking about? I gotta, I gotta let the helicopter go by. You got a helicopter? It's all right, it'll go away. I don't even hear it. Well, you didn't right, I've got a I've got a scatter thing running. They they're never gonna lock in. Oh yeah, right. The, um, I mean, they tried on those houses just recently, but yeah, those houses. I don't know if anybody noticed this, but in the news recently, there was a huge storm in Whitby Island, right? Was it? No, 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 storm. no, no, Excuse arson. me. It was a huge that was storm Carly. created by a person. <laughs> yeah, a storm. Uh, um, a person came in. Burned down three burned houses. Down <laughs> some houses. Well, he burned down one house. He went after this one house. And he did it so quickly. He did it with gas, you know, just yeah. blew the thing to bits that the two houses next to it went up right. too. So this was close to where you live pretty much. It was yeah. on the island. Why? Yeah, in South Island. The guy was arrested. I saw the photo. Yeah. Uh, why would, why, why did this happen? Uh, because it was a, it was a cover for a drone strike that they were looking for me. And yeah. so they had to arrest somebody. No, it was, no, it was just some, it, some guy got angry. That's all it was. Well, Some guy freaking I, lost it. People who are firebugs, pyromaniacs, uh, generally have sexual dysfunction, supposedly. So when I saw that guy being escorted away by the police with his arms behind my back, I thought, I got you. You were number. looking to see if he had an erection? Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, Me too. <laughs> no. Me too. Yeah, well, of course you were. But <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> no, the other thing we were going to do, what are we confirmed? I don't know. Oh, for love of God. All right. Do you want me to go back to the mailbag? Yeah. Uh, all right. Why do I not? Re is this something I'm involved in? Yes. It's something you're involved in. And I don't remember. Maybe I was sitting in my car too I told you I was going to do this. And so, okay. So, uh, but listeners, I get stuff all the time. So, I get, I get uh, flat earth paddle balls and watches. I'm going to interrupt you when I remember. It's probably the, the carbon monoxide in but my garage. I got something unusual. I don't usually get these, but I thought, well, how appropriate. Yeah. Being that mainstream media came out and, and we had to sell our souls to do that means that we are confirmed with... No! Oh! <laughs> yeah. We are That's Illuminati right. confirmed right now. Wait, wait. Here, here. No, wait. Here, let me get you a pack. Hang on one second. Where's my? I gotta find my second pack. All right. Ready? Here. No way. Take this one. Okay. Wait. There. I got it. There you go. Oh wow! I know, right? Thanks for giving me that. They're magic packs. They can New actually. New World Order Limited Edition Starter Set. Yeah. Illuminati. The Illuminati cards. They're Illuminati cards. 55. Actual full blown Steve Jackson games. Illuminati cards. Wow, collect and trade them. Now these like, packs are worth a lot, right? Yeah, these are not cheap to get. So thank you. I'm not going to name you because I don't want to. Well, because one, they're Illuminati. I'm not going to name you. Uh, all hail. But um, 
thank you for sending these to me and you guys can pick them up on eBay if you want. But the reason why, it's like, why, okay, so why do we have Luminati card decks? Because you can, uh, you can look in yours. Have you even opened yours? No, I didn't. I was saving them for the show. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I'm opening them now. This so a, I always wanted to buy these, but they were too expensive. I mean, the, oh, come on. Okay, they're not too expensive. They are expensive, but yet I well, couldn't rationalize it. Because there's only two cards in it that we care about. Right, right, one, right. One is NASA and the other one is Flat Earth. And mm. if I'm not mistaken, yours. So like while she's looking for hers, and yours are in alphabetical order. Are they? Are they supposed to be? No, they don't have to be in alphabetical order, but I can put them in alphabetical order for you. Well, you know like what's if funny you, is if you don't, it's not like if you don't have them in alphabetical order, the spell will be broken or anything like that. The first one I've got is AMA, the American Medical Association. Oh, so do you want to rattle them off real quick? Okay. Should we just go through them real fast? Are, we have the same ones or different ones? We have different ones. Okay, so you read five and then I'll read five just okay, for fun. Okay, I have, and we're going to, we won't do the black cards, you know, the, the, the weird black cards. But so the first one I have is KKK. That's wait. That so talk again oh, because I ruined it by talking and it took the camera off you. Oh, sorry. The first one, my first one is KKK. Hold it farther away. KKK. How's that? Okay. Better? KK. All right. Second one is kinder and gentler. That's nice. Third one is Las Vegas. Viva. Fourth one is Lawyers. Ew. Fifth one is Lone Sharks. Okay, now you do five. All right. As I mentioned, the AMA, the American Medical Association, is the first one I've got. Next one, pretty hilarious that I would get this one, right? Those of you who know things that I've been called that are completely untrue since I've been on YouTube. <laughs> The agent in place card. And I know also someone's going to take a screenshot. Hidden in plain sight, guys. Also known as the Alex Jones card. It's the Alex Jones card. Yeah. Next up, I've got Atomic Monster card. Go, go, Godzilla. Next up, we've got the Auditor from Hell. See, I don't know what all of these cards are about. Hey, and do I have one? another one? You have five. Well, what's your, yeah, you have, that was four. I, that was four. Okay. This one is called alternate goals. Plan B something top cool. secret. All right. Let me rip through mine real quick. All right. Uh, liberal agenda. Well, that one's true. That has happened. Let's get organized. Huh? Somehow yours are not in focus. So hold it far, a little farther away. Moon base. Wow. Yeah. That looks like Antarctica to me, not the moon in that picture. Media sensation. You mean flat earth? Exactly. And last but not least, Midas Hill. And I actually do not know what that one is. It looks like a hill with paved with gold all the way up to it. All right. right I'll, I'll show five more and then we'll, we'll probably be too boring after that. All right. This is assertiveness training right here. So people getting their guns. Hey, that's, that's assertiveness training means getting a wrench <laughs> as we've given out some today. The next one is backlash where it shows a black man who looks somewhat like Obama with people throwing things at him. Now, see, I haven't read what this card's actually supposed to be about. Next up is boy sprouts. Don't even understand that at all. And benefit concert well, we've seen so many of those over the years yeah and oh my gosh we spoke of this how weird we spoke of this earlier bigfoot bigfoot okay so i won't go through my next ones but here go ahead and go through your deck real quick because the your car maybe, your we'll, deck maybe we'll show them stay stay where you are in the next secret show we'll show more oh really so they, you're yeah, gonna have to all right all right we'll wait what do you think that's a good idea or not no that's fine we There's quite a lot of cards. This is so There's, fun. Yeah. All right. But we'll just make sure where you left off. Yeah, I did. I left it right there. All right. Thank you very much. Wait, let me give them back to you. All right. All right Can right. I hand them over? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Sure. Okay. Wait. Here. Ready? You got them? Wait. Hang on. Here you go. No, you got to go for it. All right. There we go. 
All right. Keep those right, safe. Hold on to these. No. Keep those safe till next time. All right. Okay. They're magic. Um, but they act real, real live Illuminati cards. So thank you to the person who sent those to me. It is pretty cool. All right. Let me see. All hey, Carly Sunshine is here. X Stranger XX. PSY XIX Warrior is here as well. And Flat Earth Accord. Um, Bill Keith, who I already said hello to earlier, and Carl Steinbeck, and Flat Earth Mexican. And uh, let's see, Laurel Austin is uh, not on with Zen tonight, she mentioned. And uh, But Kathy's going to be in chat because Zen's got a show on Truth Frequency Radio, TFR. Um, let's see what else. Um, oh, my love cocktail. I already said hi to him. And Shanti, his dog, wanted to mention that. Hey, hello to Twitwit. Uh, who says, I didn't know there were different decks. You know, I have looked on eBay for them before and I noticed there were different decks. And when the eBay seller in particular would show them, they'd say what cards were there. And for me, I'd be like, but I want some from this deck and then some from that other deck they're selling. Oh, right yeah. There. I don't want to buy them all. But look, look what just happened. We we have the ability to share, which is yeah. nice. Uh, let's see. Uh um, my love is talking about a meetup coming up Saturday, the 22nd. Now I mentioned Saturday, the 22nd, I'm going to be in the UK, uh, with Martin and Nathan and a bunch of other people. Uh, but there's one coming up in, uh, Chicago, Illinois. It's, uh, between two and 8 PM at Hawthorne's backyard bar and grill one, two, zero, zero West Hawthorne lane. And, uh, you can go to flat Earth Chicago, Facebook, and you can find out more, or you can message Malav, M-A-L-A-V, Malav. I know I'm saying it wrong, but I don't want him to think I'm calling him my love. And then, well, you know, that'll be kind of crazy if I do that. Um, what Somebody else just is emailed me a big sign, big banner they're going to take to the Las Vegas meetup tomorrow. So, That's cool. Yeah. Hey, uh, I want to say hi to Crazy Flat Lady as well. And... Um, <laughs> Elspeth Awake, hello. Oh, Elspeth asked you to show one of the weird black cards you were speaking of. That's a good, oh. that, uh, yeah, that did spur some interest. In oh, yeah. Well, no, they were more, they're, if you know anything about card games, they're more generic things, but here, I'll show them to you real quick. And I also want to know, is it a game that you play, and when did the Illuminati card decks come out? The 90s, the mid-90s. Right, so there's a picture I just saw randomly going through that looked, Pretty much like Obama behind the presidential party. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, there's a reason why the agent in place, it's like the, the, the creepy thing about the card. Here, let me show you the black cards first, and I'll kind of mm -hmm. tell you what's going on. So the, the black cards, in this case, are the servants of Chithulu. Here, I'm going to fix him. Let me go. Servants of Chithulu. That's one of them. I don't even know what that is, but it sounds sort of weirdly demonic or something. Bavarian Illuminati. Hmm. They're they're multi they're multi purpose game cards. I've not played the game, but I just judging from what's used with other games, Shangri La. That's one of the four black cards I've got. That sounds nice, right? Shangri La is yes. like a paradise and or something. The network. Ooh. The network with a Mercator map on it. Interesting. Yeah. So there, it's an interesting deck. But the reason why you guys can look up the history on this, the reason why the the cards are so special is because one not that many people played the game but they seem to be prophetic only years later like for example uh, and we'll, we can talk about this next week if you want the world trade center card where where the twin towers got blown up uh you know it's it's a it's a terrorist act it's a generic terrorist act didn't mention 9 11 specifically but there is you know two high you know two towers that, that so, got blown up the so alex jones card so were, was it just smart people speculating on the future or was it people with insider information because this has all been planned out a long time ago, including the building of the World Trade Center? Uh, it's very, yeah, very, very interesting, including, well, one would be NASA. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the fact that NASA, the NASA card has just a cardboard cutout, uh, you know, of the, of the astronaut with, you know, on a soundstage. But the, the weirdest card, I think, in the entire series is Flat Earth. And it's very the simple. Card, flat Earth, and the Twin Towers. Those to me are the weirdest. The the Flat Earth card says people laugh. The quote is perfect. People laugh, but the Flat Earthers know something. And more it than shows something, baby. More than and it something. shows a square Earth. 
you know, with with land on it. Hmm. So very, very interesting. But again, it was done in the 90s, but a lot, of, I mean, there's like an Edward Snowden card. And I know you can read into some stuff, you know, it's got sort of a biblical feel to it, but it's interesting. Interesting deck. I want to say hello to the Hori Sheet Show. And I want to say hello to Synthetic Dread. Um, I want to say hi to Helio Skeptic as well. And uh, Elspeth Awake says, thank you, Mark, for that. Um, Irk Child says he knows how the, to actually play the game. I guess we all could. You know, I've never liked games. I've never liked board games. I just never have liked card games. Do you? I mean, uh, oh, oh, are you kidding? You know me. I am uber nerd. I could out nerd most big time nerds. You know, chess club, math club, those guys. I could out totally out nerd. I used to host, I think I told you, Magic the Gathering parties back in the day and I didn't even own a single freaking card. I helped broker people so, so, when they sold their cards. And it was it that Magic the Gathering is what started it all back in Wizards of the Coast up in the Northwest. They made so much money. Wizards of the Coast did. You know what they did with some of their money? It's what like what nerds do with their money. It's like, "Oh, I bought a real lightsaber, you know, or I bought Darth Vader's helmet." You know, they actually bought some of those guys they actually took their money and they bought Dungeons and Dragons. And you're saying, what are you talking about? No, I, no. I they, know. Ugh, Dungeons and Dragons. They went and bought the licensing. They bought, they actually went to the company that made Dungeons and Dragons and bought them out. That's what Wizards of the Coast did. There was a guy in high school that I didn't know when I started. I, my family moved from Florida to Michigan. I lived in Michigan, but we'd been like Michigan to Florida, Florida back to Michigan. So I did high school in Florida and then wrapped up in Michigan. And while in Michigan, I had just started going to that high school and I walked to my car when class was over to drive home and a guy approached me and I was new and I didn't know everyone. And he literally looked like he could be uh, from like Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Ring. Oh my God, exactly. Lord of the Rings, like the Hobbit or something. He, I mean, he wasn't small, like a Hobbit, but he had that. I wouldn't know anything about that. He had that look, the clothing style sort of, but kind of like a long, loose fitting sort of trench jacket and a sort of fluffy shirt. Yeah. And he came to me and he asked me, he said, well, there's some people here at school who play Dungeons and Dragons. We want to know if you would like to join us after school. And I thought, okay, that seems weird. The guy kind of looks weird. How judgmental was I? He was probably a totally cool guy, but he was a nerd and he was brave enough to approach the new girl, which I think says a lot about nerds that they're pretty cool. Not so much, but it, 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 great that you'd stick up for him like that. No, no, no I, those I, the I, the no. Dungeons and Dragons guys from the late seventies, early eighties. What we're talking about here? Yeah, we're talking about exactly that time. Yeah, the those guys were ostracized. I remember though hearing rumors. It was always this whispery. It's like, yeah, did you hear about those guys? They play under, like underneath the stairs in the theater department you know, after school or at lunch and crap like that. And well, I mean, what else would other guys be doing? What, like throwing around the football and crushing exactly. hands exactly. on exactly. their forehead and chasing cheerleaders? I hated those guys too. Truth so, be told, if I was a little bit older or if I had was a little more open-minded, you know, I, mean, I was just naive at the time, I would have been right there with them. The old school, roll the 20-sided dice, Dungeons and Dragons. I should have maybe said yes as opposed to saying no, thank you, and thinking maybe that's a weird guy, and then going home and, you know, just chilling with my family. I should have said yes. My life could have been completely different. I could have been I could have been involved in many Renaissance festivals because of that one move in my life, like the butterfly effect. Yep. Yeah. You'd be a, you'd be a fortune. You'd be doing tarot cards right now. Yeah. No, no I kind of maybe I'm glad that that didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, but I, no, no, it was interesting though. But that, yeah, Magic the Gathering started that. So when it, people talk about, I mean, it's very similar to like Pokemon. So when Magic, because Magic the Gathering was still kind of a more of an adult game. When Pokemon com, came out, they dumbed it down. The card game got about as basic it was get it was going to get, and then you'd see kids playing it, and that's where they hooked them. Pokemon, the Pokemon cards made a ton of money, and kids were playing them at lunch. At school at recess they're just slapping down cards so it was magic gathering pokemon this was kind of a fringe fringe type of thing but i never I, heard of it until i got involved in flat earth and i think there's other flat earthers who feel the same you know earlier i was talking about uh dread of you been exposed and i right. was trying to think of the channel associated and it's sassy undeniably it's like bam that just came into my mind sassy 
undeniably. That's a really cool name. And I encourage you to go subscribe to that channel. Let's see if we can bring her subscribers up. Um, her, uh, her channel banner says, FEC, Flat Earth Community, Ubuntu Contributionism. So she's got some uh, really good videos there. And um, she does what look like live streams that are pretty lengthy, you know, somewhat like a, like a secret show. And right. a bright, sparkling personality. So sub to sassy, undeniably. So it's just the word sassy and then space, undeniably. So, yeah. Did um, I tell you, were we going to talk about the news that was coming out of the conference? I guess. And now I can't remember what that news is. Um, the extra ticket rumor that is going to be open. Well, up. it's only a rumor. No, it's not. It's not a rumor anymore. Oh, so it's been confirmed. Yeah, they're going to do it. All right. Well, so anyone that is on anyone that is on the waiting list right now. Good Lord, you do look like what are you? I didn't even see the sleeves in this thing till now. You're saying oh. but what? Yeah, you might be in a Renaissance festival. Look. No, you are in a Renaissance <laughs> festival right now. I realized what I was wearing when I said Holy that. Holy like, smokes. Oh. What? <laughs> I if I weren't vegan, I'd be eating one of those giant turkey legs like the <laughs> <Renaissance> <laughs> I forgive me, milady. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about the I'm talking about these things uh, as if they're they're not. I, and here I am wearing the right outfit. Sorry. <laughs> um, Arwen is saying uh, that he was playing Magic the Gathering at school. So oh yeah, of- oh no, Magic the Gathering was the. Uh, it was gr- Magic the Gathering was the finest card game I think I've ever played in my life. It was fantastic. It was a perfect time for it to come out in the 90s. And for those of you who've ever played it, I'm going to tell you right now, my favorite deck of all time, you're going to think it's absolutely nuts because it was way too big. It was a 100-card deck. It was artifacts and walls. No one could touch me. Because basically the game worked in multiple levels. You could, you could out-point. You could out-do somebody in points. But if you ran out of cards... You were out. And so even if you're, you know, one on one or one on five or whatever, if you ran out of cards, you were out. And so what I would do is I would create massive walls and, and people would just be trying to hit me and they couldn't. And I'd still have 50, 60 cards left. Those who know what you're talking about are saying, yeah, man, yeah. And others who yeah, are saying, really cool. Other people are going, that's just too weird. What? Okay, let's talk about the conference. Well, um, you know, but um, now that I've seen you what you're wearing, I'm going to have to change <laughs> change up my my presentation of it. Well, ye old conference. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. Hear ye. We have news about the conference. Let All it, gather around. Let it let it be known <laughs> on this day that the conference <laughs> tickets have been expanded. Uh, so what's going to happen is he's going to uh, lo- he's going to open it up. So those people who are on the waiting list. You're probably going to get a notice. I don't know how many people are on the waiting list. If you're not on the waiting list for tickets right now. Get on it right now because remember you said, oh, I'm never going to get in. No, now you're going to get in potentially. Press passes have been expanded, but they're not going to be capped until the last minute because especially because of the mainstream media thing we've been dealing with now because you know how that goes. So like, if, What about if, the hotel? Is there any room? The hotel is pretty in? much sold out. If you can't get you, – if you haven't booked your hotel room at that hotel tonight, you're going to have to go to the one down. There's already an overflow hotel which happens to be administered by a flat earther. Shh, don't tell anybody be our little secret. But the uh, just go down the street for that one. And But yeah, you won't be able to stay at the hotel. If you do not book by tonight, if you can even get in tonight. There was like almost no rooms left when I when I talked to him last night. All right. So, it, so that's they're good expanding news. the room. They're, they're basically taking it as far to capacity as they can and moving stuff around and, and doing what they can because of people are going on the waiting list. Right. And, and saying, look, I want tickets. I want tickets. If you are, and just remember, if you are going, because there's no, re- no refund policy, if you can't go and you want to sell your ticket, put it on eBay or let us know. You know, if you know, well, like three weeks in advance, we'll, we'll talk about it on our things. Right, right. Uh, there's no, no, no flat earth ticket hub or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But let let people know because they will be snatched up. There's people on the waiting list now. Oh, I get messages a couple of times a day saying, are there any more tickets? Do you know, you know, so right. people are interested. No. And we have been castigated on some channels. We're saying that we're doing it for profit and we're making the money. 
I receive zero from the conference now and zero when it's over. It's not for profit. I spend my own money to fly there, my own money on taxis to get to the hotel, my own money on food, uh, my own money on the hotel. And uh, so and so do the other speakers that are going. We're doing this because we want to do it. And it's yeah. Do it. I mean, we nobody knew. Let's put it this way: the 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 people that were putting on this thing, they had had no idea what the demand was going to be. Nobody right. did. That's why they didn't make it bigger than it is. Yeah. And now they're probably kicking themselves. Now they're kicking themselves. <laughs> uh, next on. year we'll make it bigger. And well, let's face it: it could go. It, it could go to a whole other level because here's here's my thought on this: if this thing gets any weirder over the next four months, what could happen is. A different, you know, this, this happens all the time, and that is a pr another producer steps in and they say, "Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna move venues. We're gonna take care of everything on your end, and we're gonna move it. To, we'll keep it in the same city, but we're gonna find a place that holds five thousand seats, or whatever." Just imagine it is. if there were five thousand flat earthers together. I mean. Oh, be How nuts. many flat earthers are there? We don't really know because there's a lot of closet flat earthers. YouTube is not exactly the only way to find out. Yeah. Um, I remember before I started a channel, I used to watch flat earth videos, but there's no record of me doing that because I didn't have a channel and I didn't comment. So there's others that are like me that are a toe, you know, putting a toe in the water at that. They're, they're at that stage that I was before I started a channel right yeah. now. So. Anyway, so it's it's super exciting, and uh, so yeah, if you are not on the waiting list, get on the waiting list. If you are already on it, check your email, double check with the conference provider because uh, they're going to open it up. I don't know how many extras. I'm not going to confirm that. And if you're looking for press passes, boy, you better get in there. And if you're looking for press passes, the word on the street is the word on the street is you gotta go like this. It's like. <laughs> Two tickets. I got flat earth tickets. You need like a got, trench coat to open. I got it. front row. I got VIP general admission. I got tickets. So the the word on the street is is that do not ask for more than the bare minimum. Don't go in saying I want a press pass for four people unless and there you're will be security. There will be badges. If checked. you want to volunteer for something. Uh, yeah. Security volunteers are going to be warmly welcomed. Yes. Uh, if, if you're ex-law enforcement or if you're just a big guy with a quick temper, <laughs> that, that'll that be fine too. And a wrench, actual wrench, big, just painted blue. You'll be fine. The uh, Those volunteers, contact the, the organizers. because uh, In the description box of this video is a link to find out more about the conference. Right. Um, I do want to shout out Wesley Stace. Uh, he's got a new channel called Wesley Stace. And, fl and Flat Earth News Talk, Wesley Stace and Flat Earth News Talk. So it's another channel that uh, needs a, needs some subs. He's just started this new channel and it could use some love. What else? What else? Uh, a ton of other things. Uh, I don't know, we've covered a lot are. so far. Oh, did we already talked about David Weiss's channel going down. And yep, yep, David Weiss's channel going down, resub it. Resub to it. Oh, that's very important. Quite a few people have made videos along those lines. And again, just to be clear, he wasn't he wasn't nailed for Flat Earth. He was nailed for Sandy Hook, which in my opinion is just petty. But also, if you are wondering if the moon can affect our weather, you know, we're all putting together pieces of the puzzle to see to see what the real world's about. We've been told what the world's about, but we're all trying to find out what the real world is about. And X Stranger XX, otherwise known as Stephen Chess, has a channel, which is simply X, then the word stranger, and then the letters XX all run together, X Stranger XX. He's been doing a series of uh, videos on predicting the weather uh, with, the, with, all right. with the moon. All right. And it's very interesting. To be honest, it's somewhat beyond my level of comprehension, but uh, at least I'm honest about that. So go to the ch channel X Stranger XX, give him a sub, watch some of these. He just uploaded yesterday a uh, prediction conclusion, wrapping up a series that he did, and perhaps maybe he will do more. Um, I know I'm going to say the name wrong, but I will say it anyway. On Friday, today is Wednesday the 12th, so the 14th. Boy, that took me a while. The 14th Friday, 2017 of July. My guest is going to be Einar or Enar, E I N A R, Kusk, K U U S K. And he is the guy who has got um, the 
uh, YouTube channel where he's doing a documentary. He's on part number three. So E-I-N-A-R-K-U-U-S-K, sub his channel and join me on Friday, uh, the 14th of July for, uh, you know, a show about him and what caused him to go out and do this documentary and how it's affecting his personal life. And I got to watch part three. Changed I watch his that. life. Yeah. It's really great. Really great. Uh, so far with that documentary series on number three, as we speak, let me see if there's anything else that I, um, I know there's so much that I have. Flat earth numbers have only uh, gotten higher. We broke 17.9 just recently between the last show and this show. And I'm not going to jinx it and say, hey, 18 million, but we're right there. And again, scoring higher than most of the mainstream stuff. There's a channel called Plant Based Comedian. All run together, Plant Based Comedian. Right. And uh, they have done a spoof of us, us kind of, of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, mm -hmm. um, The Secret Show, and uh, their video. Flat Earth and Other Mashed Potatoes, interview with Donald J. Trump. And so we've got a Donald J. Trump impersonator, plant-based comedian, actually. And um, oh, it's a fun video. So go check out Plant Based Comedian, the channel, and uh, give that video a view. And Mia is the woman playing me, and she's got dogs that she holds up and says are cats, you know, to kind of mimic me with my cats. And... Just in general, it it will make you smile, and it's it's really it's really cool. So, the reason that she got together, Mia, with plant based comedian is um, she was wearing a NASA fakery shirt, and she made this shirt herself. And she was in a grocery store and was approached about it by a person saying, "Hey, what's that shirt all about?" And he's a YouTube content provider, um, you know, the one I just mentioned. And they got together and did this because she was wearing a flat earth shirt. Get out. Really? So when you wear a flat earth shirt and you're in a grocery store or somewhere public, somebody can approach you and the next thing you know, you're making a flat earth video. That's why wearing these shirts is a really great thing. Um, it's, it's a teaching tool. And here in Houston, I see people wearing NASA shirts and I, the first part of my mind, since I'm a flat earther, is I think it's a NASA spoof shirt until I realize, oh my God, that's person serious. <laughs> They're wearing that shirt because they either work They're for selling NASA them at like Walmart and or places. believe in NASA. They're selling them dirt cheap out in, out in the stores, like five yeah. bucks a crack. So, oh my gosh, so many other things. Uh, let's see. There is a new song by Amanda and it's a flat earth song. Um, and Amanda, we mentioned earlier, is Seven Raven Wolf. Is that the one you sent to me this morning? Oh, f no, that's a different one. That It's called the maybe a Flat World Song. So go check her channel, Seven Raven Wolf, all together. And uh, she's got a Flat Earth song. I what I'm trying to do, that's what The Secret Show is all about. None of these things are secret, but we're talking about them openly, but it's really just between us Flat Earthers, just trying to kind of make it a community hub, a Flat Earth hub, if you will, even if you won't. So, yeah. Do you have anything else, Mark Sargent? I don't. I think I've covered a lot of stuff. We'll have to see what happens between now. Are we here next week or are we not here next week? La, 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 la. Let me see. Week from Wednesday. I'm getting confused because I know I'm going away on a trip. Next Wednesday. Uh, yes. Right. Next Wednesday, we will not have a secret show because okay. I will be winging my way to the Lemington Spa UK meetup, which is on the 22nd. So. Winging? Seriously? You're gonna, is that like a version of, well, hey, I just flew in and boy, my arms long. tired? When That's I come fun. back, I'll say I wung my way there. Past tense of wing. <laughs> yeah, I know it's not a word, but it's going to be a word. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. that concludes our show. I, for one, am spent. I don't know about you. <laughs> really? I, for one, am spent? Uh, ooh, there we go. I know. Well, Remember, until we meet again, now. thank you. We've got uh, about 260 people in the live chat, which is pretty darn good. Thanks I to everybody. Uh, hey, to, uh, just everyone. a message to everybody. Bone up in your stuff. That, yes. Uh, yes. That's the main message of everything we've been talking about. So many new channels that are coming out. So many people are older channels that are still doing good work. Subscribe and support your fellow flat earthers. And as Mark just said, 
bone up on your flat earth info because you never know when somebody's going to stop you and want to talk to you, learn more, potentially interview you, and you'll right. be the one in the spotlight and have that opportunity to shine for flat earth. Yeah. And isn't that why we're here? We want to get this message out. And when we get enough people on board, then we can talk about uh, finding out who did this to us. And then we can talk about getting rid of them somehow. Right. So world domination. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Thanks to everyone. Until we meet again, Patricia Steer and Mark Sargent and the secret show number 175 is concluded. So keep it flat. Death to all hope.